Chapter 7, As If Together, Part 1 The latest issue of Ashoeve magazine had been released. The young man on the cover, with a satisfied smile, was a rising star in the field of architecture. Over the past two years, he had won numerous international design awards and gained widespread recognition. It's a shame he's not handsome enough, Xiao Hong commented with infinite regret. That lawyer he is handsome, but unfortunately, he's hard to interview, Ame chimed in loudly. Ame, don't say that, Xiao Hong couldn't stand her sharpness and retorted, Mo Xing has done her best. Mo Xing happened to approach them and overheard their conversation. She glanced at Tao Yijing, who was quietly writing something at her desk and felt a hint of guilt and unease. A sheng, a sheng. Suddenly, Xiao Hong remembered something and flattered her by shaking her arm, we're friends, right? You wouldn't refuse to do me a small favor, would you? Mo Xing immediately had a bad feeling about it and cautiously asked, Xiao Hong, is there something wrong with the surgeon you're seeing? Otherwise, why would she need to go on a blind date again? Nonsense. What are you thinking? Xiao Hong pouted, covering her face with both hands, pretending to look sweet, it's about this. She took out an exaggeratedly large piece of paper from somewhere and shook it in front of M.O. Xing, take a good look. M.O. Xing saw it clearly and felt dizzy. The paper had shopping list written at the top center, and below it was a long list of various brands of clothes, shoes, cosmetics, and even a digital camera. It was a diverse assortment, and M.O. Xing's head was spinning. Xiao Hong, are prices going up recently? This was practically a shopping frenzy list. Hee hee, aren't you and Chen Jie planning to go to Hong Kong? Don't change the topic. One word, will you help or not? The, the news had spread quickly. M.O. Xing sighed, what's in it for me? After work, Dr. Ching invited Xiao Hong to dinner, and Xiao Hong kept reminding Mo Xing at the dining table, A Xing, you know what they say about short-lived relationships. Mo Xing chuckled, don't worry, I'll help you until my hands get tired. But, Xiao Hong. She leaned in and whispered, aren't you giving up on acting like a lady? Oops. She forgot again. Xiao Hong immediately straightened up, revealing a perfect smile that wiped away her previous stern expression. Mo Xing saw the elegant Dr. Chang's eyes sparkle with amusement, he had clearly noticed and enjoyed the transformation. Mo Xing smiled too. Xiao Hong had finally bid farewell to her past. After dinner, Mo Xing went home alone. She realized she had taken the wrong bus and ended up heading towards her previous place of residence. Hurriedly, she got off at the next stop. Looking at her watch, it was not yet 7 p.m., so there was no rush to go back. She wandered around the supermarket for a long time and didn't return home until after 9 p.m. When she opened the door, the house was empty. In the kitchen, she unpacked her groceries one by one, monosodium glutamate, cooking oil, salt, soy sauce, the kitchen was bare, what did Yi Chen usually eat? In the bedroom, some clothes were still not organized. Opening the wardrobe, Yi Chen's suits and shirts were neatly hung, looking plain and cold. He seemed to prefer grey tones. Mo Xing hung her clothes next to his and smiled foolishly then suddenly felt heartache. Yi Chen. Yi Chen. She took off her shoes and lay on the bed. She had been sleeping in the guest room these past few days, but now, she suddenly didn't want to leave. An inexplicable emotion overwhelmed her chest, perhaps because of what would happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday, Yi Chen would be back. She fell asleep without changing her clothes. In her half-awake state, she seemed to hear someone moving around, but she turned over and fell back asleep. Later, she woke up to find that it was already morning. She opened the quilt and got up, the quilt. 
Emma Oshing was puzzled, she must have pulled it over herself because she felt cold last night. Hastily brushing her teeth and washing her face, she saw her hair was a bit long in the mirror, constantly falling into her eyes. She needed to find time to have it trimmed. Gathering her things, she opened the door and was stunned. E Chen, dressed in a suit, stood outside the door with keys in hand, as if he was about to open it. Emma Xing widened her eyes and looked at the person in front of her, Yi Chen. Why was he here? Wasn't he supposed to come back at night? Yeah, Yi Chen put away the keys, responding casually. He walked past her and went into the guest room. A, a while later, he came out with some documents. When he saw her still standing by the door, he furrowed his brows. Aren't you going to work? Ah, uh, I'm going, emotion felt a bit awkward. For the first time, she realized that their relationship had changed, and from now on, every morning, the first person she would see would be him. I'll give you a ride. Emma Oshing followed him into the elevator. No need, I can go by myself. The law firm and the magazine were in opposite directions. Yi Chen pressed the button for the underground parking lot and said indifferently, I'm going to the Axe District Court, it's on the way. Oh, okay. Emma Oshing now understood. In the car, Emma Oshing suddenly remembered to ask him, You, did you come back last night? Otherwise, how would there be documents left in the guest room? Y yes, Yi Chen answered briefly, his attention focused on the road. Emma Oshing pursed her lips, when, why didn't you call me? Around 11 o'clock. He answered a bit impatiently, then paused before adding, there was no need to. Mo Xing's eyes dimmed slightly, and she turned to look out the car window. It was rush hour, and the traffic was terrible, would they continue to be stuck like this every day? Yi Chen, if you're in the Axe District at noon, can we have lunch together? Yi Chen suddenly moved, turned his head, and spoke softly, as if speaking to someone, I probably won't be there at noon. In fact, he wasn't there in the morning either. Yi Chen. Lao Yuan's big eyes blinked at the person who walked into the law firm, and he rubbed his eyes like a little girl, as if he couldn't believe what he was seeing, could my eyes be playing tricks on me? I think the one with the problem is not your eyes. Yi Chen glanced at him and walked into the office. The big man followed closely behind him and sat down, you contacted me yesterday afternoon when you were still in Guangzhou. How did you come back so quickly? I was at the airport at that time. Yi Chen sat down and flipped through the documents. Is everything settled? P pretty much. When Yi Chen said pretty much, it meant that there was no problem at all. Lao Yuan had to admire his junior brother. Dealing with matters in Guangzhou within a week was already considered tight, yet Yi Chen managed to finish a day ahead. He wondered how Yi Chen did it. You came back late last night, didn't you? Why the rush? It wouldn't have been too late to come back today. Lao Yuan mumbled, if I didn't know that you're also a loner like me, I'd suspect you hurried back to be with your wife. The pen that had been writing on the documents suddenly stopped and left a heavy mark on the paper. Yi Chen lifted his head from the documents, paying no courtesy to him, and issued a peremptory order, Lao Yuan, if I recall correctly, you have a court hearing this morning. Seeing the person in the meeting room, Ahmed quickly handed him the printed materials, Attorney He, I've already printed the information you requested. And here is the invitation to see University Centennial Celebration, sent together with the one to Attorney Yuan, she said, handing it over separately. Thank you. Yi Chen nodded and accepted the invitation. It was exquisitely designed with the iconic building of C University on it, indicating the centennial celebration on November 15th. Ame looked at the wall clock, it was already 5.40 p.m. 
Attorney He, if there's nothing else, I'm going to leave. There's nothing else, you can go. Then I'll leave first. Ame packed up her things and suddenly remembered something. Attorney He, your phone rang several times just now. E Chen had forgotten to take it with him when he went to the meeting, and there were two missed calls. One was from the other party he had been dealing with, so he immediately returned the call and spoke for a few minutes before hanging up. The other call, he pressed the green button. The other party answered right away. E Chen. What's the matter? His voice sounded a little distant. Um. The other party seemed to be deterred by his coldness and paused before saying, E Chen, I can't find my keys. Across the street, she waited for him, her bag slung over her shoulder, wearing a sweater with a large collar, looking down and counting the tiles on the ground. A red light. He stopped, watching her from afar. So many things hadn't changed. She still liked wearing sweaters, despite being in her late twenties, she still dressed like a student. When she waited for someone, she would count the tiles on the ground. At that time, he always made her wait. One time, after waiting for a long time, she got angry and complained to him, I've counted to 999. If you make me count to 1000 next time, I won't talk to you anymore. As a result, on another occasion, he was caught up in a last-minute meeting by the department, and after the lengthy meeting, he rushed over. To his surprise, she was still there. This time, she didn't show any anger for waiting, she just looked at him with a touch of grievance and said, E Chen, I've counted several 999s. How many times had he counted to 999 over the past seven years? He had thought of giving up, but he could never make it to 1000. Chapter 7, As If Together, Part 2 Hastily walking along the sidewalk, Yi Chen slowed down as he approached Mo Xing, who was accompanied by a plump foreigner, smiling and talking to him. Yi Chen gradually approached and faintly overheard the foreigner saying, Your spoken English is perfect. Thanks, I've been there for seven years, Mo Xing replied, smoothly speaking English without any hesitation, as if it were her native language. Yi Chen's hand, which was in his pocket, unconsciously tightened. Just th then she asked, he now, only the two of them remained. Mo Xing suddenly felt awkward and didn't know what to say. Yi Chen broke the silence, where are your keys? Um, I think I lost them, she said uncomfortably, avoiding eye contact. Or maybe I just forgot to bring them with me this morning. Yi Chen keenly observed her uneasy expression and felt a strange emotion welling up inside him. If she thought she could hide her guilt from him, she was mistaken. If Miss Xiao committed a crime in the future, it would be best for her to remain silent, otherwise, she would expose herself with just a few words. Let's go, he suddenly quickened his pace and walked ahead, suppressing the emotions that arose due to her small actions and the ripple that formed in his heart when she mentioned, my husband. Where, where are we going? Mo Xing asked as she followed behind him. This direction was not toward his home, it was in the opposite direction. T to have lunch. Lunch? Mo Xing hurriedly followed him, trying to keep up with his fast pace. Can't we go back home and eat? Let's go to the supermarket first, it's not too late. When did she learn how to cook? And for whom? Yi Chen's tone was slightly chilly as he replied, no need. If, if he said there was no need, then there was no need. But, could he slow down a little? Yi Chen, please slow down, Mo Xing said breathlessly, reaching out and grabbing his sleeve, unaware of how intimate her action was. Yi Chen's heart jumped suddenly, and when he lowered his head, he saw her fair fingers holding onto the sleeve of his dark grey suit. Without saying anything, he slowed down his pace. 
They turned a few corners and entered a small alley, arriving at an ordinary small restaurant. M.O. Shing curiously looked around, but there didn't seem to be anything particularly special about the place. However, it was often the most inconspicuous places that served the most delicious food, and if Yi Chin brought her here, it must be good. The, the boss greeted them warmly as they entered the restaurant, speaking the local Y city dialect. It's been a while since you last came, Mr. He, the boss said. Mo Sheng was surprised to hear him speak the local dialect, but Yi Chin replied in the same dialect, I've been quite busy lately. The boss looked curiously at Mo Sheng and asked, Mr. He, is this your girlfriend? It's the first time I've seen you bring a girlfriend here, and she's very beautiful. Yi Chin smiled, no, this is my wife. Wife? Mr. He, you got married. The boss exclaimed in surprise and turned to M.O. Shing, saying, Mrs. He, you're so lucky to marry someone like Mr. He. Are you also from Y City? I'm also from Y City, M.O. Shing replied, understanding the dialect but speaking Mandarin at home due to her mother being from another region. The boss chatted with them casually while handing them the menu. Yi Chin gestured for Mo Xing to order, and she took the menu and saw that the restaurant's signature dishes were all related to bamboo shoots, bamboo shoot slices with chicken, fresh bamboo shoots with shredded pork, and fresh bamboo shoots stir-fried with pickled vegetables. It wasn't surprising since Y City was known for its abundant bamboo shoots, which were currently in season. She loved bamboo shoots, but maybe she shouldn't order them. After a while, they placed their order, and the boss reproached to Mo Xing, Mrs. He, you're from Y City too, why don't you eat bamboo shoots? Was it strange not to eat bamboo shoots? Yi Chin didn't eat them either. In the past, when they ate together, he always said that bamboo shoots had a strange taste and never touched them. Mr. He always orders them, and Mo Xing explained. The dishes were served one by one, but Yi Chen's chopsticks never touched the bamboo shoots. Mo Xing hesitated, why aren't you eating them? The boss said. Yi e Chen interrupted her, it's fine. His tone was somewhat restrained, and there was a hint of self-mockery. I'm not used to making people wait. Every time he returned home, it was always a lonely room. It, it was already past 11 o'clock. Yi Chin opened the door, and his fingers instinctively reached for the light switch on the wall but stopped just before pressing it. The, the light was already on. He put down his hand and surveyed the room. The TV was on, but there was no sign of anyone. He, he walked over to turn off the TV, and as he passed the sofa, he caught sight of someone curled up and sleeping. He suddenly stopped. Yi Chin stared at the sleeping face and felt the urge to wake her up and scold her. It, it was so cold outside, how could she sleep on the sofa? Was she brainless? Although annoyed, he still bent down and gently picked her up from the sofa. Her soft body filled his empty embrace, and her warm breath gently brushed against his cold suit. In, in all these years, he had never dared to imagine a day like this, where she would be within arm's reach. With just a stretch of his hand, emotion completely belonged to him. B bowing his head slightly, he brushed his cheek against her soft one. After sleeping outside for so long, she was still warm. Emotion in his arms moved slightly, avoiding his touch, and each chin held his breath, fearing that she might wake up. But she only found a more comfortable position, buried her head deeper in his embrace, and fell back to sleep without realizing that someone's heart was surging due to her small movement. She, each inside, unable to control his increasingly tender emotions. He lifted her gently and put her on the bed. She wore a cardigan over her sleepwear. After hesitating for a moment, he decided to help her take it off. He unbuttoned it one by one, and his breathing began to get erratic. 
The feeling of the soft skin on her back, even through her sleepwear, made his heart race uncontrollably. He pulled the blanket over her and quickly stood up to leave. If he continued to stay there, he couldn't guarantee that he wouldn't wake her up in a certain way. After washing up in the outside bathroom, Yichen walked towards the guest room. When passing by the master bedroom, his steps paused for a moment as he suddenly remembered something. He pushed the door open and looked at the bed. Of course. The quilt only covered half of her body, while the other half was dragging on the floor, and one foot was boldly exposed outside. In just a short ten minutes or so, she could sleep like this. It seemed that when she used to say her sleeping posture was only, a bit bad, it was too modest. N knowing that her sleeping posture was bad was during the winter they spent together. Mo Xing caught several colds during those two months, five times in total. At first, she refused to say the reason, but later, she embarrassedly opened her mouth, my sleeping posture is a bit bad at night, just a bit bad. I keep kicking the quilt. When my father comes home, he can help cover me with the quilt. But here, there's no one, and I always have to struggle to get the quilt at midnight. So, you can't blame me for catching colds. As she spoke, she already had the appearance of a cold-afflicted person, with an expression of, I have a reasonable explanation, and it has nothing to do with me. Now it seemed that her sleeping posture was more than just a bit bad. Ichen lifted the half-dragged quilt from under the bed and covered her again. But as soon as he let go, she unexpectedly turned over, and the quilt fell to the other side of the bed. What a sleeping habit. Ichen reached over, pulled the quilt again, and covered her firmly. He stared at the peacefully sleeping Emo Sheng with a somewhat annoyed look. If she dared to kick again, he wouldn't mind correcting her sleeping posture all night long. Un Unfortunately, Mo Xing remained obediently asleep, not moving at all. In the end, she even curled up in the quilt as if she were afraid of the cold. At such times, even Mo Xing, who was sleeping, knew to be considerate. What time was it? Was it daytime or nighttime? Why was she sleeping on the bed? She sat up from under the covers, her mind not quite clear. Emotion got out of bed with sleepy eyes, but she couldn't find her slippers anywhere. Wh where did they go? Yi Chen came out of the kitchen and saw Mo Xing hopping around in her pajamas in the living room. He couldn't help frowning, what are you doing? M my slippers. She spotted them over by the sofa and hopped over to retrieve them. After putting on her slippers and looking up, she saw Yi Chen staring disapprovingly at her. Um, I was looking for my slippers. She suddenly felt guilty for no reason. Go change your clothes, he said coldly and turned away. When she lowered her head, she blushed at the realization. She almost forgot there was another person in this room. A after changing her clothes, Mo Xing came out, and Yi Chen was already having breakfast. She hesitated for a moment and sat down next to him, looking at the plain kanji and dishes on the table, eating breakfast with him. Seeing her hesitating, Yi Chen raised his gaze, not used to Chinese-style breakfast. Ah, oh. No. She snapped out of her daze and quickly lowered her head to take a sip. Surprisingly, it tasted pretty good. Yi Chen. Seemingly knowing what she wanted to ask, Yi Chen didn't look up, casually asking, How's your English? In English. Why did he suddenly ask about this? It's okay, but I haven't passed the level 4 yet. Before going to the United States, she took the level 4 English test for the first time and proudly achieved a glorious score of 59. Embarrassing to mention. Come with me. Yi Chen said. Ha. Mo Xing looked at him in surprise. Go where? To the law firm, help me translate some documents. 
she couldn't translate. Staring at the English words on the paper, it was outrageous. After so many years abroad, she still couldn't do it. Ask Chen. Glancing up, he seemed very busy, maybe she shouldn't disturb him. In the quiet office, the phone suddenly rang. Yi Chen flipped through the documents with his right hand while answering with his left. Hello. I'm at the law firm. Sorry, I have something today. On the other end, someone said something, and Yi Chen smiled, Lao Zhou, when did you become a matchmaker? Lao Zhou said something again, and Yi Chen smiled, are you asking me to have an extramarital affair? What extramarital affair? Lao Zhou reacted slowly and then refuted himself, are you saying you're married? He exclaimed, thinking it was a joke. Don't mess around, anyone can get married, but you, he Yi Chen, can't. What nonsense, Yi Chen laughed. A after hanging up the phone, Yi Chen looked at Mo Sheng, who was working hard next to him. A bad habit that couldn't be changed. Back then, she couldn't do calculus, and she would bite on her pen and then push her homework to him, looking at him pleasingly, Yi Chen. Feeling sorry for her as she was the one studying law, and yet she did calculus better than many science students. Yi Chen. Mo Xing really couldn't translate it anymore and raised her head to seek help. Ah. Walking over to her, he instinctively took what was in her hand. Where? Here, how do you translate this? Mo mobilia personum sequantur. It means movable property follows the person. A very professional term in Latin, and she couldn't handle it normally. His breath was very close, enveloping her nose. Mo Xing suddenly remembered when they used to study together, Yi Chen always seriously said, Mo Xing, don't sit next to me. Why? She came here to study with him. It, it disturbs me. Feeling a bit upset, she vowed, I promise not to talk to you, not to go out to buy snacks, not to move around. But before she finished, Yi Chen had a frustrated look on his face. Even if you stay quiet, you still disturb me. What the heck? At that time, she was so angry that she took her books and ran away. But, but now, she seemed to understand a little. B because he didn't do anything, just standing behind her, bending over, the refreshing male scent surrounding her. Her hair gently brushed against his coat. If she raised her head a bit, she might bump into his chin. Her face inexplicably became slightly hot. He was disturbing her. Then, before she even realized what she was doing, she suddenly stood up, jumping away, and accidentally bumped into someone's chin. What are you doing? Yi Chen touched his sore chin, surprised by her actions. Uh, um, I... I want to go eat. She said guiltily. What kind of excuse was that? Now she thought of... It... She glanced at the clock on the wall, it was not even 10.30. Now. Yi Chen frowned, as expected. Y yeah, um, I didn't eat much in the morning. She said resolutely. G glancing at the mountain of work piled up on the desk and then at Mo Xing, who looked a bit strange because of being hungry, Yi Chen surrendered. He knew that bringing her to the law firm was definitely a mistake. Chapter 8, As If Separate, Part 1 The KFC on Saturday was crowded and lively. Mo Xing never expected that Yi Chen would bring her here. She pulled on Yi Chen's sleeve and asked, Yi Chen, are you sure we didn't come to the wrong place? No. Didn't you used to say that this is a place only children like? In the past, you liked this place too. A hint of displeasure flashed across Yi Chen's face. Ah. Then I'll save our seats. 
and Mo Xing wisely volunteered for an easy task. Sitting by the window on the second floor, Mo Xing took a few bites of the burger but couldn't eat more. She swayed her cola, engaging Yichen in conversation, and somehow, she started talking about the things she had just translated. Yichen listened and raised an eyebrow, when did you become so interested in law? Well, it's always good to know more about the law. No need for that. Yichen smirked, you can continue being legally blind. As long as you're not getting a divorce, I can help you with anything else. Ha! Mo Sheng was taken aback. Was he joking? Xiao He, why are you here too? A surprised female voice sounded behind Mo Sheng. She turned her head and saw a woman in her thirties leading a pair of adorable twins towards them. Uncle He. The twins called out in unison. One of them mischievously said, Uncle He, your girlfriend is so pretty. Miss Fong. Yi Chen stood up to greet her. The sharp and capable looking woman was a prosecutor at the district prosecutor's office, and Yi Chen was representing her in a case. Fong patted her son's head, don't be impolite. Then she smiled at Yi Chen, he lawyer, you're too frugal. Despite your significant income, you take your girlfriend to eat at this foreign street vendor. Yi Chen smiled, some people like it. Did he mean her? Mo Xing wondered. She used to like it when she was in college, but after so many years abroad, she doubted she still had the same taste buds. What's this, lawyer he? Is there something going on between you two? Fong was observant, a skill developed in her profession. She immediately sensed some ambiguity in Yi Chen's short response. Her eyes briefly looked at Mo Xing, making her feel different from other girls. Not at all. Yi Chen brushed it off and changed the topic, I heard you might be getting a promotion. Congratulations in advance. It's not confirmed yet. Fong modestly replied. After a moment's hesitation, she asked, Xiao He, I wanted to ask you last time we met, but got distracted by a phone call. Did you take Wei Daoguang's case? That's not true. I only consulted with his relatives. Wei Daoguang used to be the deputy mayor of a prefecture-level city and was suspected of embezzling and misappropriating funds exceeding 100 million yuan. The newspapers had many reports about this case recently. Mo Sheng, who worked in a well-informed media industry, naturally heard about it, but these news reminded her of some unhappy memories, so she rarely paid attention. Fong smiled reassuringly, I would worry if you took on this case. I've already told our office that Xiao He never takes cases involving corruption and bribery. She sighed, if every lawyer were like you, many criminals wouldn't be able to escape justice. Thanks for your praise. However, even criminals have the right to defense. I don't take these cases for personal reasons. Personal reasons. Mo Xing's hand, stirring the ice cubes, slowed down noticeably as she looked at Yi Chen's indifferent expression. Her mind wandered to her own situation. Yi Chen. Mo Xing poked the ice floating in her cola with the straw. Do you mind my father's situation? Yi Chen remained silent, leaving Mo Xing feeling a bit uncertain. She continued, actually, my father is a good person, and those things. It has nothing to do with me. He interrupted her heartfelt words with a cold tone. In a moment of bravery, Mo Xing said, I won't go to the law firm this afternoon. Yi Chen stopped his hand, looked at her, and his deep black eyes revealed an indescribable emotion. I'm going shopping and want to buy something. I won't be able to help you anyway. In reality, she didn't have anything specific to buy. Wandering aimlessly on the crowded streets, Mo Xing felt a bit down. Perhaps going shopping was a mistake. This lively atmosphere would only amplify the loneliness of a lonely person. 
This past month had been like a dream. Two people who were almost strangers suddenly became intimately married. There was no buffer, skipping all the processes, but not skipping the unfamiliarity caused by years of separation and the difficult to untie knots in their hearts. Her father. Her previous marriage. It seemed that all the problems were her fault. Mo Xing forced a bitter smile. After browsing through several shops and trying on two sweaters, she couldn't find one that suited her. Maybe appearance is a reflection of the heart. She suddenly remembered that she needed a haircut. Finding a hair salon in the city was easy, and as she left the clothing store, she saw one nearby. Artistic hairstylist. The name sounded familiar. Mo Xing searched her memory and finally remembered that it was a shop highly recommended by Xiao Hong. Xiao Hong's taste had always been terrible, but she thought not everyone there could have hair like Xiao Hong, right? Pushing the door open, she sat down, waiting for over an hour before it was her turn. How would you like your hair cut, miss? The hairstylist asked. Just make it shorter. Just like this. Yes. That's perfect. The hairstylist seemed peculiarly pleased. I love to have creative freedom. He muttered as if talking to himself, but Mo Xing didn't pay much attention. Until over an hour later. Mo Xing stared at herself in the mirror. How could this happen? Why does it look like this? Her hair was uneven, as if it had been gnawed by some animal. Do you think it's not good? The hairstylist glared at her fiercely, scissors gleaming coldly in his right hand while the hairdryer hummed in his left hand. Ah. Uh, no. Mo Xing mustered courage, actually, if you look closely, it's quite nice. Really? The hairstylist's tone changed completely, and he seemed happy, as if he was about to fly with joy. Yeah, Mo Xing confirmed. The disheveled look of the model in the shop window flashed in her mind, and she couldn't help but laugh. Passersby looked at her with bewilderment, unable to imagine why someone with such a head of hair would be so happy. Miss, would you like to come inside and take a look? The saleswoman greeted her enthusiastically. Mo Xing just realized that she had been staring at the model in the store window for a long time. She had a habit of staring at things without blinking when she was absent-minded. She used to scary Chen like this often. Sure. Feeling a little embarrassed, Mo Xing walked into the store under the saleswoman's hospitable smile. The store sold famous brand men's clothing, and Mo Xing was only casually looking around until she stopped in front of a windbreaker. A simple style and Chen's favorite color. She involuntarily touched the collar, imagining how handsome he would look in it. Are you buying clothes for your boyfriend, miss? This is the latest design of this year. It's currently on an 80% discount, only 3,200 yuan. Mo Xing was stunned, it was so expensive, almost her one month's salary. She didn't have that much money on her. She apologetically shook her head to the saleswoman's smile. Walking towards the door, she hesitated to leave. The windbreaker really suited him. Suddenly, she thought of the card that Yi Chen had given her. Hurriedly walking back, she asked, do you accept card payments here? Swipe here, please. That swish sound stopped. Miss, please sign here. Mo Xing nearly wrote her own name out of habit, but then she remembered that this was Yi Chen's card, and she should sign Yi Chen. Yi Chen. She had written this name many times. Once, they had a little argument. She couldn't remember the specifics, but she knew she was upset. She went to study alone with a math textbook, which was supposed to be draft paper. When she returned to her senses, the paper was filled with Yi Chen. 
Then Yi Chen's voice suddenly came from behind her, M.O. Shin, you made a mistake. He looked at her, his eyes filled with laughter. Where? The embarrassment of being caught vanished, and she picked up the pen, writing it seriously to show him. Yi Chen, what was wrong with it? The stroke order is wrong. The on the right side of should be written inside the comma and finally, the hook should be drawn. He encouraged her, come, write it again. She must have been taken in by his seriousness, as she picked up the pen and actually prepared to write again. Until she finished writing one, he, she came to her senses. He Chen, why am I writing your name? M.O. Shing handed the signed slip to the saleswoman, who smiled and handed her the bag. Welcome to visit us again. The memories of the past made the slightly improved mood descend again. Walking out of the store, M.O. Shing stood blankly. The sweetness of the past was now beyond reach, while the sorrow of reality stayed by her side without leaving. When would they be able to regain their past happiness? And when would this repetitive emotional turmoil come to an end? Chapter 8, As If Separate, Part 2 Thinking that Yi Chen wouldn't return home so early, M.O. Shing solved her dinner on the street and arrived home after 8 o'clock. When she opened the door, the room was indeed pitch black. As she fumbled for the light switch, a deep male voice sounded. Back already? Yi Chin. M.O. Shing was startled, as she wasn't prepared for his presence. The voice came from the balcony, with Yi Chen's tall figure facing away from her, not turning around. The air between them felt heavy and suffocating. Why didn't you answer the phone? Yi Chin asked solemnly, a faint red light glowing between his fingers. What phone? M.O. Shing took it out of her bag and found it had already run out of battery. It's out of power. Out of power. So that's why. Yi Chin seemed to relax suddenly, his voice carrying a hint of fatigue. Go to bed early. Mm. M.O. Shing answered, hesitated for a moment, and then said determinately, Yi Chin, I need to talk to you about something. What is it? I feel that we don't seem like a married couple. We. Is that so? Yi Chin said with a hint of sarcasm. Then what should a married couple look like? You should have more experience in this aspect than me. For a long time, there was no sound behind him. Yi Chin put out his cigarette, turned around, and saw M.O. Xing standing a few meters away with a bag in her hand, lips tightly pressed, and a pale face. I bought some clothes for you. M.O. Xing stared at the floor, speaking softly. I used your card to pay. Would you like to try them on? A sharp pain surged in Yi Chen's heart, making him unconsciously clench his fists. For all those days, all he ever imagined was the day when Emo Xin could stand before him again, within reach, no longer a mere illusion. And now she was really standing in front of him, what else was he yearning for? You! Yi Chen's tone softened, and his voice stopped abruptly when he saw her hair. Realizing his intense gaze, M.O. Shing looked up. Was he looking at her hair? She felt a bit embarrassed. I cut my hair. I saw it with my own eyes. Yi Chen's tone was firm, and there seemed to be something accumulating in his eyes. He turned away, seemingly unable to look at her for too long. He quickly lit another cigarette, and after a while, in an extremely suppressed voice, he said, go to sleep. But. Don't talk to me right now. He rudely interrupted her. Although M.O. Shing had been tired from shopping all day, she couldn't fall asleep. She laid on the bed, listening to Yi Chen's footsteps moving from the balcony to the study and then, after a while, from the study to the guest room, and finally heard the sound of the door closing, leaving her in silence. 
she didn't know when she fell asleep. The next morning, she woke up feeling a sore throat, and based on her experience, she must have caught a cold again. Yi Chen had already left the house early. Mo Xing took some medicine and had a simple lunch, but she still felt uncomfortable, so she went back to sleep. When she woke up, the window outside had already darkened. Yi Chen stood by the bed, his hand resting on her forehead, looking somewhat serious. Mo Xing stared at him, wondering if she was dreaming. Yi Chen moved his hand away. Get up. I'll take you to the hospital. Ah, uh, wasn't that too much of a fuss? I just have a slight cold. You have a fever. I already took some medicine. Mo Xing insisted. He looked at her, nodded, and didn't say anything else. He got up and walked away. Mo Xing thought he would give up, but she felt slightly disappointed for some reason. Unexpectedly, Yi Chen went to the wardrobe, took out her clothes, and placed them in front of her. Do you want to do it yourself, or should I help you change? As the liquid dripped slowly through the infusion tube, she had indeed come to the hospital. Remembering how someone almost forced her to change clothes earlier, Mo Xing blushed suddenly and glared at the person across, who was reading documents. As if sensing her gaze, Yi Chen looked up, and Mo Xing quickly averted her eyes. Yi Chen didn't mind and seemed to remember something. He stood up, went out for a moment, and returned with an entertainment newspaper, placing it beside her. Mo Xing pretended not to notice and picked up another newspaper left on the nearby empty seat to read. Yi Chen raised an eyebrow, letting her be. If his wife wanted to learn something, studying securities investment would be a good thing. Mo Xing stared at the colorful newspaper. Regret surged within her. Most of it was a chaotic mess of images, and when she finally found some words, they were accompanied by a bunch of numbers and professional terms, making her feel even more dizzy. Regretful. Her eyes glanced at that colorful newspaper. She really wanted to take it over and look, but then she looked at Yi Chin, who was concentrating on his work. He probably wouldn't notice, right? Her hand moved stealthily, almost grabbing it, when Yi Chin suddenly flipped a page in his documents, and she immediately pulled back. Forget it. Mo Xing felt discouraged. It's just a little over an hour. She could endure it. This she could endure, but there were some things that weren't so easy. Half an hour later, Mo Xing started feeling restless. Yi Chen noticed her movements and frowned, turning to the middle-aged woman next to him and said, Can you help me with something? When he returned from the bathroom, Mo Xing restrained herself for a while but couldn't resist asking, How did you know what I wanted to do? He didn't even lift his head saving energy and answering her with four words, a general inference. This guy. Mo Xing glared at him. Returning from the hospital, Yi Chen gazed at Mo Xing as she slept, then turned off the bedroom light and went to the study. Is it because she slept too much in the afternoon or because of the drip bottle, Mo Xing felt much better and couldn't sleep at all. She tossed on the bed and suddenly remembered something almost jumping up. My goodness. She's going to Hong Kong tomorrow, and she hasn't prepared anything yet. She really didn't know what she had been doing for the past two days. She had forgotten such an important matter. Hurriedly getting up from the bed, she took out her travel bag and started packing. She was in such a hurry that her documents fell to the ground, and Mo Xing bent down to pick them up, but someone's hand was faster and picked them up. Ha! Upon getting up, her wrist was immediately tightly grabbed by someone. Yi Chen held her identification documents, his eyes clouded with gloominess. What are you doing? Packing. Her wrist was hurting from his grip. Mo Xing wanted to break free, but he held her even tighter. 
Her eyes glanced at the already mostly packed luggage, and the gloominess in Yi Chen's eyes deepened. Where are you going? She realized she hadn't told him yet, so Ammo Xing obediently answered, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yi Chen's anger gradually intensified. If it wasn't just a coincidence, no, it wasn't a coincidence at all. If he hadn't wanted to come and see if she slept well, whether she would disappear without a trace tomorrow morning without his knowledge. Did she have any sense of being a wife at all? Did she really understand that she was already his wife and could no longer leave him decisively like she did before? The wounds from the past were cruelly torn open. Yi Chen's grip couldn't help but tighten, and his gloomy eyes continued to stare at her without any relaxation. Fine, tell me, how many years will you be gone this time? What was he talking about? Emma Xing felt the dizziness from her cold coming back, and the pain in her wrist was becoming increasingly hard to ignore. Yi Chen, can you let go of me first? Let her go. N no way. With a forceful pull, she fell into his embrace. Yi Chin leaned down and kissed her fiercely and angrily, not gentle at all. That kiss seemed like he wanted to swallow her whole, denying her even a breath of air. The arm around her waist tightened, as if he wanted to mold her into his own body, to become a part of him. Yi Chin. Mo Sheng wanted to break free from his grasp, feeling the anger he conveyed through his actions, but she couldn't understand why. However, her feeble struggle seemed to fuel his passion. Her small resistance deepened his desire to control her. He pinned her down on the bed, firmly holding her, while his deep eyes gazed at Emo Xing beneath him, she was the only possession he wanted. Emo Xing, this is a husband's duty. He sucked on her delicate skin, forcefully leaving his mark on her. His intense and direct actions caused Emo Xing to gasp lightly. It hurts. Yi Chen's movements paused slightly. Hurt. Did she even understand what pain meant? Pain was the enormous void left when she lightly smiled in her dreams, the inexplicable days no matter what she did, and the even greater loneliness that followed every moment of success. How could she understand? During those times, Mo Xing, you were in someone else's embrace. Her sleepwear was half pulled off, loosely hanging at her waist, and her hands were trapped, leaving her unable to move, at his mercy. The sight before his eyes and the intoxicating sensation in his hands caused Yi Chin to lose all rationality. His burning gaze locked onto her, the desire he had been suppressing for seven years now engulfing him completely. His palms roamed freely over every inch of the forbidden territory he longed to possess, leaving scorching kisses on the skin he yearned to claim. The passion carried a hint of resentment, making Emo Xing unable to think clearly, feeling as if she was immersed in a dreamlike state. Until a strange, sharp ringtone interrupted the trance-like atmosphere, bringing her back to her senses. Dazed and confused, she vaguely remembered that the peculiar ringtone belonged to Xiao Hong. Could she even think clearly now? Yi Chin tightened his grip, but gradually, the incessant ringing demanded his attention as well. He slightly loosened his hold on her and reached over to answer the call. Finally, Emo Xing had a chance to catch her breath, but as soon as she tried to speak, she began coughing uncontrollably. She was already feeling unwell due to a cold, and now the cough seemed endless. The ringing stopped, leaving the room filled only with the sound of her intense coughing. Yi Chen remained half-pressed against her but didn't continue. His lost rationality started to return bit by bit. Mo Xing's clothes were in disarray, and the faint red marks on her body seemed to accuse him of his recent roughness. He could even feel her trembling slightly. A wave of self-disgust overwhelmed him. He had already forced her into marriage, and now he was forcing her to accompany him to bed. He forced out a bitter smile. What are you going to do in Hong Kong? Business trip. 
The magazine needs to discuss a collaboration with a publishing house in Hong Kong. Yi Cheng, it'll only be a few days, I forgot to tell you, M.O. Xing explained one by one. Yi Chen remained silent. What had he just done? Marital rape. Yi Chen calmed his rapid breathing, suppressing the surging emotions. He began helping her tidy her clothes and buttoned her bra, feeling her tremble slightly and look somewhat uneasy. I won't do anything to you, he said in a low voice, self-mockery evident as he suddenly got up and left the bedroom. M.O. Xing only heard a loud bang, and she was left alone in the room. The strange ringtone resolutely rang again, and M.O. Xing reached over to pick up the phone. Xiao Hong's excited voice came through, Xing, don't forget to buy something for me in Hong Kong. It's really cheap there. After Xiao Hong's enthusiastic explanation, M.O. Xing closed the call. She wanted to smile, but a smile couldn't be forced out. Tomorrow she would go to Hong Kong, and they would be like this. Wavering and hesitating, she eventually pushed open that door. The guest room was dimly lit by a faint yellow table lamp. Yi Chen sat on the bed, gazing intently at her. The ashtray beside him was already filled with cigarette butts. Quietly, M.O. Xing walked to the other side of the bed, placed her pillow next to his, lifted the corner of the blanket, carefully lay down, and then closed her eyes. Yi Chen remained silent and lit another cigarette. After a while, M.O. Xing spoke softly, can you turn off the light? I want to. Sleep, the word disappeared into the air. She was suddenly lifted into the air and seated on his lap, tightly confined in his embrace. His warm breath brushed against her neck, and each end's low, hoarse voice carried an imperceptible tension. Do you know what this means? How could she not know? M.O. Xing lowered her gaze and used her fingers to write on his chest. One stroke, two strokes, three strokes. She was writing. Ichin trembled and grabbed her restless hand, his eyes filled with a mixture of emotions. M.O. Xing, why do you torture me like this? A at that moment, between sorrow and joy, she kissed him to prove her current reality. When he finally let her go, M.O. Xing was already gasping for breath, leaning weakly against his chest. The silence was so ambiguous. M.O. Xing felt uneasy and wanted to find something to say. Yi Chen, I caught a cold. Wasn't he afraid of getting infected? I know, I won't take advantage of you now. Yi Chen held her, helpless and resigned. Ha! Huh. M.O. Sheng was a little stunned. Did he misunderstand something? But, did she have to say that she didn't mean it? She didn't want to. It would seem like she was eager to be taken advantage of by him, and he would surely mock her for that in the future. Well, you can take advantage. Air. Who was speaking? It definitely wasn't her. M.O. Sheng was extremely embarrassed. Yi Chen remained silent, didn't he hear? M.O. Sheng felt relieved for a moment, but then she found that the buttons on her chest had been quietly unfastened. Her fair shoulders gradually exposed to the cold air, covered in the clear and deep marks left by his previous passion. It was evident how forceful he had been just now, but now he wanted to take advantage of her again. His fiery lips pressed against her skin once more, branding over the previous marks. M.O. Xing, did I hear wrong? Yi Chen's voice was filled with a husky tone. M.O. Xing couldn't speak, he had gone all the way, and he asked such a question. The passion forcibly extinguished was so easily reignited. Yi Chen suddenly carried her and walked to the bedroom, placing her on the bed. Here or there, what's the difference? M.O. Xing didn't understand, but she didn't have the strength to ask anymore. Yi Chen's scorching body covered hers, 
and his fiery lips and tongue dominated her completely, taking her on a journey through an unfamiliar world until the passion subsided. Mo Xing fell asleep in a daze, but her sleep was restless. She woke up in the middle of the night, not knowing what time it was. The space beside her was empty, and her eyes wandered around the room until she saw Yi Chin standing by the window. Perhaps it was because of the darkness, but Mo Xing suddenly felt that his figure was so heavy, making it hard for her to breathe. He seemed to sense her gaze and turned around, but in the dark night, she couldn't see what was hidden in his eyes. He put out the cigarette and walked over, lifting the blanket to lie next to her, quietly hugging her. Mo Xing remained silent for a while before she couldn't help asking, Yi Cheng, what are you thinking? There was unease in her voice. Nothing, just figuring some things out. What did he figure out? Mo Xing wanted to ask, but she was silenced by his kiss. Mo Xing, have your hair grow longer. Ha! Huh? Although she didn't understand how they got to this topic, her attention was shifted. She asked him with concern, is my hair ugly? Yi Chen's lips curved into a smile. No, it's not. Be because, that way, th there will be more of you. He kissed her hair, dealing another blow to her already fragile confidence. M.O. Xing, it's really ugly. Chapter 9, Constant Temperature, Part 1 The next morning, being in a hurry was perfectly natural. She was awakened by Yi Chin again, and he was already up, looking fresh and holding her phone. Your phone. Oh. Mo Xing struggled to open her eyes and reached out to take it. However, she was interrupted by Chen Jia, who was going to Hong Kong with her and she burst into a tirade, Xiao Mo Xing, do you know what time it is now? We are all waiting for you at the airport. Hurry up. If you dare to act like a slow tortoise, I'll stomp on you, hammer you to death, and turn your skull into a pendant. A series of typical threats from Qin Jia. Now Mo Xing was fully awake and checked the time, quickly getting up. In a hurry, she put on her clothes and packed her luggage, but Yi Chen couldn't stand her disorderly behavior and grabbed her, saying, Can you be more organized? You've buttoned it wrong. Ha! Huh. Mo Xing lowered her head and saw Yi Chen's slender fingers calmly rebuttoning her coat. The embarrassment and shyness she temporarily ignored because of her anxiety suddenly surfaced, and her face gradually turned red. All right. Sensing the ambiguous atmosphere, Yi Chen's heart fluttered slightly, then he let go, clearing his mind, and took the car keys. Hurry up, pack your things, and I'll take you to the airport. When they arrived at the airport, there were only 20 minutes left for boarding. Mo Xing hurriedly got out of the car but was stopped by Yi Chen. I'm running out of time. He paused suddenly and Mo Xing stared at the extra item on her left ring finger. A very simple platinum ring with an extremely plain design, no extravagant patterns, just a small circle of diamonds embedded in the delicate patterns of the ring. It looked unexpectedly elegant and generous. When did you buy it? I don't remember. It had been too long. I found it yesterday evening. Oh. Mo Xing raised her hand and looked dumbfoundedly at the ring on her finger. Under the winter sun, it shimmered with brilliant light. You have less than 10 minutes now. Yi Chen smiled, reminding her. 10 minutes. Mo Xing immediately imagined Chen Jia holding a hammer. She was doomed. Without even saying goodbye, Mo Xing took her luggage and ran but she couldn't help but lower her head multiple times to look at the ring on her finger while running. The overwhelming happiness in her heart seemed to overflow and burst out. Hong Kong, China
This time, the magazine company dispatched representatives to Hong Kong mainly to discuss cooperation with a Hong Kong magazine. It had nothing to do with Mo Xing, but because she was fluent in English, she was brought along as an interpreter. Thanks to their well-prepared negotiations, the discussions went very smoothly. After signing the contract three days later, the team had some free time. That evening, they went out for shopping. Oh my god. Why are cosmetics so cheap here? It's killing me. I just bought this necklace for a thousand yuan more. Chin Jia was complaining loudly in the shopping mall. Originally, she was there to accompany Mo Xing for shopping, but later, she became even more enthusiastic about shopping in Hong Kong than Mo Xing herself. After a whole night of shopping, she seemed more tired than the intense meetings in the previous days. Back at the hotel in the evening, Chen Jia collapsed on the bed like a dead body. Mo Xing looked at the phone on the table, hesitating whether to call Yi Chin. You should call, and it's reimbursable. Mo Sheng was startled by Chen Jia's sleep talking, turning to look at her as she turned over with her eyes closed. Could it be sleep talking? Picking up the phone, Mo Sheng dialed the familiar number. Soon, Yi Chen's calm voice came from the other end, Mo Sheng. Mo Sheng was taken aback. How did you know it was me? Were they on the same wavelength? Caller ID. Oh, then are you off work? You called the home phone. Mo Xing was speechless. There was silence on the other end for a while, and Mo Xing could feel that each inside. What have you been doing in Hong Kong these past few days? Oh. Mo Xing immediately began to report her activities. Whenever there was nothing else to say, Yi Chen would casually bring up another topic. The call lasted almost an hour, and even after hanging up, Mo Sheng was still immersed in the conversation. On the other side, Yi Chen hung up the phone and picked up a pen, but he didn't write a word for a long time. The cold seemed to have subsided since she had not coughed during their call. Her cold should be better now. The law firm had achieved a series of victories recently, and after the routine meeting, everyone was in high spirits and didn't want to disperse. It was clear that they intended to play a trick on the three senior lawyers. With a boss like Lao Yuan, who loved to have fun, he generously said, All right, wherever you want to celebrate, just tell me, all expenses will be covered by the three lawyers. A after much discussion, they suddenly heard someone suggest, How about we go to lawyer He's house? The meeting room immediately fell silent, and all eyes turned to the speaker, who was an intern at the firm, Xiao Gao. Everyone looked at her, and even the usually open-minded girl felt a bit embarrassed, I just thought, instead of going somewhere else, why not have a hot pot at lawyer He's house? We can do it ourselves, and it would be more meaningful. Her suggestion made some people consider it, but they didn't dare to join in too eagerly. The three senior lawyers at the firm, besides Lao Yuan, were not easy to get close to, especially lawyer He. He always kept a certain distance from others, both professionally and personally. However, lawyer He's house. It would be interesting to see it. Yes, that's a good idea. Lao Yuan suddenly clapped his thigh, I didn't think of that. Your house is big enough, so it's perfect. We can eat freely there. What do you think? It's up to you to decide. Lao Yuan's suggestion made everyone even more eager, and they all looked expectantly at Yi Chin. With the hopeful gazes from everyone, Yi Chin couldn't help but smile, as long as you don't think it's too cheap, you're welcome. The car was driving steadily, and Xiao Gao sat in the passenger seat, unable to contain her excitement. Just after the assignments were made, everyone else went to buy hot pot ingredients, while she and lawyer he went back to prepare. Today must be her lucky day. Taking a sneak peek at lawyer he, she couldn't help blushing. 
Although she had only been interning with lawyer He for a few days, she had already come to understand what an outstanding and upright man he was. It was impossible not to be attracted to such a man. Lawyer He, what kind of person do you like? Xiao Gao curiously asked with a naive and bold student-like innocence. Yi Chen smiled, finding her question intriguing, and he was actually at a loss for an answer. Don't you know, lawyer He? Xiao Gao said disappointedly, feeling like she had lost her direction. But then she tried again, have you ever liked someone? She tried to imagine how this seemingly forever rational and indifferent lawyer he would look when he liked someone. Would he be gentle? It was hard to imagine. Of course, this question was much easier to answer. Ah, uh -oh. So you have. She must be very exceptional. No, quite the opposite. Yi Chen shook his head, she's not exceptional at all. She was just an average student who didn't care much about her studies and always wanted to play. Her personality was all over the place, quite troublesome. Unfortunately, it seemed she was still the same, and he had no idea where she was now. Oh, is she pretty then? Yi Chin smiled and objectively said, not bad, but there are many prettier women out there. Then she must be very elegant. Elegant? Not at all. Yi Chin sighed. She's noisy. She used to call his name incessantly, making it sound like Yi Chin Yi Chin Yi Chin, and whenever he closed his eyes, he could hear it, but when he opened his eyes, it was just emptiness. He started hating her from that time. Xiao Gao was puzzled. Not exceptional, not very pretty, and it seemed she wasn't an elegant beauty according to lawyer He's words. Then why do you like her? Why? Yi Chen couldn't figure it out either. Maybe it was because her chattering voice filled his empty soul, maybe it was because she didn't like studying but still accompanied him to the self-study room only to fall asleep accidentally, drooling on half of his criminal law book. Maybe it was because she failed her English level 4 test but still enthusiastically celebrated his excellent grade in level 6. However, she was scolded by him that time for not teaching his girlfriend properly. At that time, she pitifully raised her hand, vowing to pass level 4 next time and not embarrass him. Unfortunately, she never had the chance again. Yi Chen slightly turned his head, and the intern girl was still waiting for his answer. He smiled slightly, feeling helpless, my taste was not good back then. Once I liked her, there was nothing I could do. Why was it so noisy outside? Mo Xing buried her head under the blanket, but the noisy sound still pierced her ears. Was it the sound of the TV? Was Yi Chen back? Turning over and getting out of bed, she was still a bit confused. She opened the bedroom door, only to be stunned immediately. Why were there so many people in the living room? The people in the living room also noticed her standing at the bedroom door, and one by one, they fell silent. Staring blankly at each other, the room became quiet. Yi Chin came out of the kitchen with dishes and saw Mo Xing standing at the bedroom door. He raised an eyebrow in surprise and furrowed his brow. Come in and put on your shoes. Ha! Huh? Oh! Mo Xing looked at her feet, realizing she had rushed out without wearing shoes. Yi Chen put the things on the table and politely nodded to the people, excuse me for a moment. Everyone nodded stupidly until the host's figure disappeared behind the bedroom door and then Mating finally reacted. Lawyer he is actually. Xiao Gao and Lao Yuan looked at each other and saw disbelief in each other's eyes. But the evidence was solid, the bedroom, the pajamas. They both shouted out the answer at the same time, living together. Idol shattered. Xiao Gao's heart was broken. She thought lawyer he was a super serious person, but he was actually living with someone in secret. 
What a blow. Tears of a man fell from Lao Yuan's eyes. Even Yi Chin was living together with someone, yet he was still single. Xiang Heng didn't seem as surprised as them. Although he couldn't have imagined that Yi Chin would be living together with Zhao Mo Xing, he said, I told you, as long as he meets Zhao Mo Xing, any of Yi Chen's principles can be compromised. Once in the bedroom, Mo Xing saw Yi Chin leaning against the bed, waiting for her. She looked at him with big eyes, feeling guilty. Wearing his pajamas and with messy hair, she stood there half asleep. AI Yi Chin sighed and took the clothes from the side of the bed, I'm used to it. I'll go out first, and you come out after you put on your clothes. When Yi Chin went outside, everyone's expressions were back to normal. After all, most of them were already lawyers or future lawyers, and they had to be calm in such situations. Xiang Heng and Lao Yuan were smoking on the balcony. When they saw Yi Chin coming out, they waved at him. Handing a cigarette to Yi Chin, Lao Yuan enthusiastically asked, illegitimate cohabitation. Yi Chin raised an eyebrow, it's legal. Upon hearing this, Xiang Heng was taken aback, and even the old smoker Lao Yuan choked, coughing for a long time before reacting. What does legal mean? It, it means a long-term contractual relationship established on the basis of equality and mutual consent between a man and a woman. Yi Chin explained in a very legal manner. Lao Yuan was dumbfounded. Yi Chin smiled, to put it simply, I'm already married, so you guys should prepare red envelopes. Ah. You. You. Lao Yuan yelled loudly, jumping into the living room to announce this explosive news. Xiang Heng didn't seem as surprised as them. Although he couldn't have imagined that Yi Chin would be living together with Zhao Mo Xing, he said, I told you, as long as he meets Zhao Mo Xing, any of Yi Chen's principles can be compromised. Once in the bedroom, Mo Xing saw Yi Chin leaning against the bed, waiting for her. She looked at him with big eyes, feeling guilty. Wearing his pajamas and with messy hair, she stood there half asleep. AI Yi Chin sighed and took the clothes from the side of the bed, I'm used to it. I'll go out first, and you come out after you put on your clothes. When Yi Chin went outside, everyone's expressions were back to normal. After all, most of them were already lawyers or future lawyers, and they had to be calm in such situations. Xiang Heng and Lao Yuan were smoking on the balcony. When they saw Yi Chin coming out, they waved at him. Handing a cigarette to Yi Chin, Lao Yuan enthusiastically asked, illegitimate cohabitation. Yi Chin raised an eyebrow, it's legal. Upon hearing this, Xiang Heng was taken aback, and even the old smoker Lao Yuan choked, coughing for a long time before reacting, what does legal mean? It means a long-term contractual relationship established on the basis of equality and mutual consent between a man and a woman. Yi Chin explained in a very legal manner. Lao Yuan was dumbfounded. Yi Chin smiled, to put it simply, I'm already married, so you guys should prepare red envelopes. Ah. You. You. Lao Yuan yelled loudly, jumping into the living room to announce this explosive news. Xiang Heng seemed less surprised, but he still couldn't help but feel astonished. Congratulations, he sincerely said. Yi Chen replied with a faint smile, thank you. Chapter 9, Constant Temperature, Part 2 Unlike the tranquility on the balcony, the living room was already in an uproar due to Lao Yuan's announcement. Just at this moment, Mo Xing came out, and once again, she was scared by the blatant gazes of everyone. Xiao Gao looked at the woman in front of her with admiration and curiosity. Was she the one that lawyer he liked once he liked? 
She didn't seem as noisy and troublesome as lawyer he described. At least now, she looked a bit uneasy standing there. Ah! Mating exclaimed softly, you are the one who found lawyer he's wallet. Mo Xing also recognized her and smiled at her, hello. Xiao Gao immediately seized the opportunity and asked Mating, Mating, do you know the inside story? Mating said, I received her once before. That time, she found lawyer he's wallet, which probably had some identification cards or business cards. She came to return it to the law firm, and I think they must have gotten to know each other because of that. And then, with the addition of some female imagination, a love story sparked from her act of honesty. Mating's voice was not small, and everyone around listened intently, savoring every word. Mo Xing, on the other hand, was dumbfounded. Miss Mating would be perfect for writing love stories for their magazine, it was a waste to keep her in the law firm. Ah! In the future, when you find a woman's wallet, you must return it, a certain man summarized after hearing the story. Xiao Gao immediately embarrassed him, now it's your turn to be a dinosaur. A everyone burst into laughter, and just at that moment, Yi Chen and Xiang Heng finished smoking and came back. Taking advantage of the lively atmosphere, someone called out, Lawyer he, confess leniently and resist strictly. You have the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. What was going on here? Were all these future legal professionals raised on Hong Kong crime films? Yi Chen chuckled, all right, I confess. Should I make my statement while eating? Of course, lawyer he would not actually confess anything, and no one dared to press him for the truth. The enthusiasm shifted quickly to the hot pot, and they joyously ate until after 9 o'clock before dispersing. Mo Xing had been keeping her head down, avoiding everyone's curious looks, and eating voraciously. When Ichin returned after sending his female colleagues home, he saw her sitting on the sofa, looking completely unwilling to move. D didn't you say you didn't want to come out to eat? Yi Chen approached her and lifted her up from the sofa, saying, You seem to have gained quite a bit of weight. Yi Chen murmured, wondering how much she had eaten. Ah! Uh, uh, what did you say? Suddenly being held in his embrace, Mo Xing reacted a bit slowly. Did she mishear something? Nothing, Yi Chen's voice suddenly sounded a little hoarse. Nothing is strange. That night, Mo Xing finally understood the meaning of absence makes the heart grow fonder. Over the next few days, Yi Chen received concerns from all directions. First, old Zhou from the court called, Xiao He, last time when you said you got married, I thought you were making excuses, but I didn't expect you actually got married. Now, my old lady can rest assured, and I can have some peaceful days. By the way, don't forget to send me the wedding invitation. Th then Fang Jian from the prosecutor's office, is it the girl from KFC? Hee <laughs> hee, I knew it from that day. I just didn't expect you to move so fast. When are you treating us to the wedding banquet? Followed by Lee, the lawyer from the joint law firm, and so on. Yi Chen sincerely admired Lao Yuan's speed in spreading the news. Probably everyone at a university's political and legal studies already knew about his marriage. This afternoon, after sending away a few old clients, Lao Yuan sat on the sofa without moving and asked Yi Chen, when are you planning to treat your friends? I'll consider after the new year. I haven't told Mo Xing yet. Th that's too late. There are still a few months until the new year. After the university's anniversary celebration is over, it should be about time. Get it done early. Lao Yuan was very enthusiastic. He liked lively gatherings. The university's anniversary celebration. Yi Chin checked the calendar and indeed saw that the centennial anniversary celebration of C University was marked on the 15th. 
He had been too busy lately and had forgotten about this matter. Let's decide on the date later. When the time comes, I'll invite you to be the witness. Yi Chin smiled. Over the years, though never spoken, he was truly grateful to Lao Yuan. Without Lao Yuan's background and capabilities, he might not have been where he was today. Witness is good. Lao Yuan was happy, as long as it saves on the red envelopes, any role is fine. Just as they were talking, another call came in, and Lao Yuan joyfully waved his hand and went out. It, it was a call from the female editor of A Show Beauty about an interview. The first time Jellyg mentioned it, Ichin refused. At that time, he hesitated because he remembered it was Mo Xing's workplace, so his tone was probably a bit stiff. Jelly didn't mention it again. Now, Yi Chen still politely declined, I'm sorry, Miss Tao, I don't think I'm suitable to appear as the cover person in a women's magazine due to professional image issues. Is it because of the professional image of lawyer he? Actually, our magazine aims to feature urban singles, and we would objectively and fairly evaluate your profession. I believe it will not harm your professional image. In this regard, lawyer he can take a look at our previous coverage on Mr. Kong Jianyan. Tao Yijing was persistent in persuading. Single. Yi Chin seized on the keyword and said gently, Miss Tao, I think I may not fit your magazine's requirements as a single. I got married not long ago. As the other party fell silent, Yi Chin exchanged a few more polite words and then hung up. He checked the messages and found one from M.O. Sheng. Yi Chin, what should we eat tonight? Yi Chin rarely sent text messages. During his college days, text messages were still a luxury, and he, a poor student, couldn't afford them. So he missed the golden age of text messages. After he started working and could afford it, he got used to making phone calls, clear, direct, and fast. Occasionally, Imei would send him a text message, but he didn't have the time to respond, usually calling her back right away to ask what was going on. Gradually, Imei sent fewer and fewer text messages. At this moment, he held the phone, patiently typing each word one by one, what do you want to eat? After sending it, he checked the time. It was not yet. 3.30, sure enough, it was M.O. Xing style. When they used to eat lunch together, after leaving the cafeteria, she would pull him aside and consult him, Yi Chin, what should we eat for dinner? Soon, a reply came, how about eating at home? Are you going to cook? Yes. M.O. Xing used multiple exclamation marks. Yi Chin hadn't had time to reply when her next message came, but I heard that it's not very tasty. Who said it's not tasty? That person. Looking at the short message, Yi Chin couldn't help but feel a surge of emotions. He paused for a moment before typing a brief reply, okay. Although Mo Xing seemed confident, Yi Chin knew better not to expect too much. So, when he returned home after work and saw Mo Xing cutting the potatoes in an extremely clumsy manner in the kitchen, he didn't feel the slightest disappointment. Instead, he saw her notebook on the dining table with a big red title on the webpage, Sweet and Sour Spare Ribs Recipe, and couldn't help but shake his head with a mixture of sighs and amusement. He walked over and took the knife from her hand, skillfully cutting the potatoes into shreds. M.O. Xing widened her eyes as she watched his movements, feeling devastated. Yi Chin, why do you know how to cook? She left no room for her escape. I started helping my aunt cook when I was ten. Oh. Such skillful knife work must have taken a long time to practice. M.O. Xing suddenly felt a bit sad. When she was living an easy life, Yi Chen was dependent on others. If only I had met you earlier. Reaching out his arm, he hugged her from behind, and her head leaned against his shoulder. Yi Chen, 
teach me, and I'll cook for you in the future. In, in that warm embrace, it seemed as if all the lingering doubts in his heart evaporated. That's fine, Ichin thought. Let the past be the past forever, and never care again. Be because he was so exhausted. So eager, can't wait to be happy.